how I did cup. A thought, a random thought occurred to me and I thought I'd share with you. It's good to be alive. It really is good to be alive. I had my little egg sandwich this morning and yeah, I know I should be eating oatmeal because I lose weight when I eat oatmeal, but it tastes so fucking good. And bacon was on sale, buy one, get one free. So it is what it is. Egg, bacon, not ham. Egg, bacon, and cheese sandwich on toast. Fucking delicious. Just yummy. Uh, not losing weight, but fucking happy. And then I had a big tall glass of pineapple juice with it, which I wasn't a big pineapple juice drinker in America, but here I kind of like it. Good stuff. Anyway, we're done ridiculing the fat man in the BMW, whether it be a red convertible or a silver sedan. We're done roasting him on the spit. Uh, now we're going to talk about correcting course, get unrealistic. There is a process that I have used and still use to reignite life or correct course when the fat man in the BMW rears his ugly head. I'm going to have to send him an email and express my thoughts to him on that. Uh, in some form or another, it is the same process used by the most impressive new rich I have met around the world. Dreamlining. That's a new term. Dreamlining. Dreamlining is so named because it applies timelines to what most would consider dreams. Okay? Interested? I'll get over the, the, the hurt and the pain, the emotional distress the fat man in the BMW comments uh, you know made. So I'll get past that. I'm, I am past it. Okay. Let's be honest. I'm past it. I was past it when after I read it. Uh, it is much like goal setting, but differs in several fundamental respects. The goals shift from ambiguous wants to defined steps. Okay, so crystallizing your goals and, and making them milestones and putting them on paper, specific, definite, like we talked about all last year. I like it. The goals have to be unrealistic to be effective. Okay, so whereas your big, hairy, or, uh, audacious goal was supposed to be something that scares you. We talked about a lot last year. Now he's saying the like even the milestones, even the small goals have to be unrealistic. The, the you you honestly think you can't achieve them. So this is a different take from Napoleon Hill. Uh, it focuses on activities that will fill the vacuum created when work is removed. So he mentioned how <laughs> He started this company and made all this money, and then he had no other, he had no plan B. He had no, no exit strategy, so he just kept working. And he worked himself, not to death, but to the point of breakdown. So here he's, before you get the money, you know, he's going to show you how to build up the money, get the passive income, but have a plan in place. Have, have specific, definite goals that you're going to achieve and accomplish when the workload is reduced. Plan ahead. Have the fire extinguisher in the kitchen from a couple days ago we talked about. Fill the vacuum created when work is removed. Living like a millionaire requires doing interesting things and not just owning enviable things. Right. That's so what we talked about the minimalist thing. It's about the experience, not about a number in your bank account that you look at every day and say, boy, aren't I rich? Because right, that doesn't really do anything for you. Um, do, 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 interesting. Not to, now it's your turn to think big. All right. Yeah. Big, be, be scared of your goals and make them so big that you feel like they're unrealistic right now. And then work the techniques in the book and make them, make them true. How to get George Bush Sr. or the CEO of Google on the phone. Okay. The article below titled Fail Better and written by Adam Gottsfeld explores how I teach Princeton students to connect with luminary-level business mentors and celebrities of various types. I've edited it for length in a few places. People are fond of using the it's not what you know, it's who you know adage as an excuse for inaction, as if all successful people are born with powerful friends. Nonsense. Here's how normal people build super normal networks. That's cool. Expand your network. Fail Better by Adam Gottsfield. Feld, sorry. Most Princeton students love to procrastinate in writing their dean's date or term paper. Ryan Morinan of 07 from Los Angeles was no exception. 
but while the majority of undergraduates fill their time by updating their Facebook profiles or watching videos on YouTube, there you go, uh, Morinan was discussing Soto Zen Buddhism via email with Randy Commissar, a partner of the venture capital, venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins Caulfield and Byers and asking Google CEO Eric Schmidt via email what he had been happiest in his life. Schmidt's answer, tomorrow. That's a good answer. That's why you, you reach out to people like that. I mean, the CEO of freaking Google, right? Like, <laughs> you, you want to know how he thinks because you want to think more that way because you want to be as successful as he is, right? Makes sense. Prior to his email, Marinan had never contacted Commissar. He had never, he had met Smith, a Princeton University trustee, only briefly at an academic affairs meeting of the trustees in November. A self-described naturally shy kid, Marinin said he would never have dared to randomly email two of the most powerful men in Silicon Valley if it weren't for Tim Ferriss, who offered a guest lecture in Professor Ed Shaw's high technology entrepreneurship class. Ferris challenged Moriman and his fellow seniors to contact high-profile celebrities and CEOs and get their answers to questions they have always wanted to ask. For extra incentive, Ferris promised the student who could contact the most hard-to-reach name and ask the most intriguing question a round-trip plane ticket anywhere in the world. So this is a follow-up to this is a breakdown written by somebody else of that thing he talked about where out of the 20 students who showed up none did it and then the next year i think he said six out of 17 did it so this marinon guy well, was one of the six obviously i believe that success can be measured in the number of uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have i felt that if i could help students overcome the fear of rejection with cold calling and cold email it would serve them forever ferris said it's easy to sell yourself short, but when you see classmates getting responses from people like George Bush, the CEO of Disney, Comcast, Google, and HP, and dozens of other impossible-to-reach people, it forces you to reconsider your self-set limitations. Breaking the mold, uncomfortable conversations. It's, we're, we're getting reinforcement here of, of stuff that he introduced earlier on, and real-life examples of it, too. Uh, Ferris lectures to the students of high-tech entrepreneurship each semester by creating a startup and designing the ideal lifestyle. I, t I participate in this contest every day, said Ferris. I do what I always do, find a personal email if possible, often through their little-known personal blogs, send a two- or three-paragraph email which explains that I am familiar with their work and ask one simple-to-answer but thought-provoking question in that email related to the work or life philosophies. The goal is to start a dialogue so they take the time to answer future emails, not to ask for help. That can only come after three or four genuine email exchanges. So basically he's establishing a relationship with these guys and the way he starts the relationship is with that question. So listen to that again, er, pause, hit the brakes, go back, write it down. So. Two to three paragraph email. I'm familiar with their work, so read their work. Don't don't lie, don't fake it. Read their work. Get to know the person, read their bio, you know, do a little research. And then ask a question that's very easy and fast for them to answer, not asking for help, not asking to meet them, not anything crazy like that. And then um, if they respond, now you can send another email, probably not right away. I'm sure he'll get into that. Um, and, and after three or four emails, it's like you have a relationship with this powerful, wealthy, successful, you know, person who's basically doing what you want to do, right? 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 A rock star. I mean, what you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. This is this is cool. This is good stuff. Um, three or four genuine email exchanges is, is the sets up for the future. Builds a relationship, really. With textbook execution of the Tim Ferriss technique, as he put it, Marinin was able to strike up a bond with Commissar. In his initial email, he talked about reading one of Commissar's Harvard Business Review articles and feeling inspired to ask him, when were you happiest in your life? After Commissar replied, 
with references to Tibetan Buddhism, Morrison responded, Just as words are inadequate to explain true happiness, so too are words inadequate to express my thanks. His email included his personal translation of a French poem by Tyson Deshimaru, the former European head of Soto Zen. An email relationship was formed, and Komisar even emailed Marinin a few days later with a link to a New York Times article on happiness. There you go. Contacting Schmidt proved more challenging. For Marinin, the toughest part was getting Schmidt's personal email address. That's the CEO of Google. Or was the CEO of Google. I don't know if he still is. He emailed the Princeton Dean asking for it. No response. Two weeks later, he emailed fan time. Sweat time. Fat boy sweat. Get the helicopter going. There we go. Helicopters are hovering. Gunships are hovering in the background. They got my back. So don't fuck with me. Uh, the dean, two weeks later, he emailed the same dean, defending his request by reminding her that he had previously met Smith. The dean said no. Marinin refused to give up. He emailed her a third time. Have you ever made an exception? He asked. The dean finally gave in and proved, provided him with Smith's email. So there you go. He used the Princeton connection. And he was persistent. He didn't take no for an answer the first time. Awesome. Good stuff. I know some of my classmates pursued the alternative scattershot technique with some success, but that's not my bag, Marinin said, explaining his perseverance. I deal with rejection by persistent persisting, not by taking my business elsewhere. My maxim comes from Samuel Beckett, a personal hero of mine. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter, try again. Fail again, fail better. You won't believe what you can accomplish by attempting the impossible with the courage to repeatedly, repeatedly fail better. Nathan Kaplan, another participant in the contest, was most proud of the way that he was able to contact former Newark Mayor Sharp James. Because James had made a campaign contribution to Al Sharpton, the website fundrace.org listed James's home address. Kaplan then input James's address into an online search by address phone directory, whitepages.com, right? Um, and then, uh, though, through which he received the former mayor's phone number. Kaplan left a message for James, and after a few days later, finally got to ask him about his childhood education. Ferris is proud of the effort students have put into his contest. Most people can do absolutely awe-inspiring things, he said. Sometimes they just need a little nudge. There you go. So, Timmy, affecting the lives of Princeton students. And I'm not sure if he still does that or not. I know for a while he was based out of Silicon Valley. I don't know if he's in the area or if he flies in to do guest lectures still. Still teaches at Princeton, but... Cool stuff. You know, that was that contest he ran. That was uh, two of the people and who they reached and how they reached them. Kind of get ideas flowing in your head, you know. Write somebody. Write somebody big. Write somebody that inspires you. Um, hell, if he was still alive, B.B. Uh, B. King. Yes, he's my hero. Uh, blues guitar legend, B.B. King. But he's, he passed away, so I can't write him. But I would. I would absolutely write him because he's, he's my hero. That's my hero. Um, I'm, I'll think I'll think about it maybe I'll find somebody else that inspires me uh, that I'm excited to talk to uh, and get to know and I'll, I'll I'll do I'll take my own advice I'll write to them too and I'll let you know how it went but you know, by all means think about it do it you don't have to pay Princeton tuition to get a Princeton education <laughs> you just got a glimpse inside the four walls of Princeton that those those kids parents paid a lot of money or student loans paid a lot of money for them to you know be be challenged that way now you're challenged that way and you watch the youtube video god bless america god bless whatever the world god bless technology right so that's it for today y'all be good um attitude of gratitude happy to be alive I'm in a great place, and I hope uh, I hope you are too, or or that you get there.